Well, hello everyone. Today is Monday and you guys know exactly what that means. We are going to do our workout. So welcome back. I hope your weekend was great. Um, if you watch the last few videos, you know how my weekend went and it's probably what we are going to be talking about for um, uh, we're, I don't even know what I'm saying. We're going to talk about that while we're working out. I seem to not be able to um, multitask. If I'm putting on my gloves, I don't know how to speak. Um, let me grab my weight. Uh, we are ready to do this. And let's see if we can just get into it. I got my little guitar picks to keep track of the um, sets and we'll see how we do. Um, get yourselves ready and get all the things that you need so we can do our workout together. And yeah, let's see if we just get going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. First set down. So, if you watched the last couple of videos, you know that this weekend was probably, uh, this one and last weekend in Texas have been sort of the loosest um, that we have had since starting this. And now we have, we are over 50 days in, which seems incredible because it both feels like forever ago. And then at the same time, it feels like we just started. So I don't know. 50 feels like a pretty significant uh, amount of time. And so I feel like things are starting to shift in my head a little bit. And let's see if we can get into what that means. Uh, we've talked about before the fact that I've always been very black and white when it comes to uh, doing this. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys have a similar journey of, okay, this time I'm gonna do it. You know, I'm gonna lose the weight and I'm gonna go all in and I'm gonna have a healthy life for the rest of my life. And then somewhere in the back of your head, you're feeling like, holy shit, is this it? I am committed for life. I will never taste another burger or another slice of pizza ever again. And so then the panic sets in and you know, but you plow through it and you know exactly what I'm talking about. So um, that has always been the case. And this time we're trying to have a more balanced approach to this, right? So let me just get another sit in and we can continue. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And so the last two weekends um, have been a bit of a test to what we're trying to do because while I had a lot of preparation for the beginning of this, I was preparing mentally uh, mostly, but also like in my systems, what I was going to be doing, how I was going to be handling um, every day. And I prepared so that the very beginning of it was here in this very stable environment where I had basically limited access to the outside world, um, limited temptations, if you will. And so um, that proved to be successful, I guess, that we can all agree that it was a successful first month where basically I just like didn't go out, <laughs> didn't go anywhere, didn't see anyone. You know, other than like a little bit of family here and there on the weekends, I was basically a hermit. And that, 
you know, as long as you can do that, um, you can be successful, I guess, or I was successful at that. Of course, you're, you know, there, there are many implications because your mental health also sort of takes a toll if you do that. Um, some people can withstand it more. I seem to be able to be more of a hermit than other people, but I, you know, I've talked to friends and family who think that just doing that, they would be miserable, and you probably are somewhere along that spectrum as well. So obviously that's not a forever solution, but I found that for me, it was very important to carve out that space and that time to get started and to be able to build some momentum. And so that was beneficial for me. Get another set. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Um, but then, then we started getting into testing a sort of, I don't know, I feel like I went into my own little private quarantine and then I had to test, you know, opening up again. And so I think the first test was last weekend in Texas. And I don't want to talk about this in terms of was it successful or not, because uh, there's a quote, I don't even know who said it, but resonates a lot with me. It says, um, failure isn't fatal and success isn't final. So I sort of want to maybe get away a little bit from looking at something as a success or a failure. I don't know. I don't know if, if it's, but what I want to say is I don't want to consider it a failure, but it's more information to try to make course adjustments or double down on something that seems to be working, I guess, you know, like not see it as such a, such, such a, like either it's a plus or a minus or positive or a negative, but maybe, I don't know, I'm just pitballing here, but just this idea of, you know, do we double down on this behavior or do we need to make some course corrections, right? Because that's the way we keep this long-term as opposed to, the way that I've always done it, and I'm sure a lot of you have, which is we take two steps in the right direction, something happens, and in our heads, it's like we tore, like every, pro all the progress that we made was tore down, everything we had built was tore down, so we get back to zero, take a step to the side, and try something else. And we keep repeating the cycle of like making, you know, one or two steps forward, then something happens and instead of just taking one step back, making a course correction and continuing to go, it just, we say, fuck it, we need to start from scratch, take a step to the side. And so we're doing like a little bit forward, back into the side, a little bit forward, back into the side. And repeating the cycle for years, uh, and we try a, a new diet, a new approach, a different thing, but then I guess this was the thing for me, like what if this time, instead of like we take two steps forward, one step back, instead of just undoing everything and starting from scratch, we just do a small course correction and keep going. And I feel like if I had just done that 10, 20 years ago, things would be very different. So that's sort of the approach that we're trying and I would, I would encourage all of you to try if your experience is like mine, I guess. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So that's the approach. Now, I said yesterday and the day before during the video that I want to do a full sort of debrief of what happened this weekend. So Friday night, had a birthday dinner. So we go, we go out, it was already sort of uh, 
the not necessarily a set menu, but you know the choices that we had, I guess, were so, somewhat limited because of the type of restaurant. And so I try to do, you know, like try to to be like to control where I could control. So like no soda or anything like that. But I don't think Friday was as big a deal. But so Saturday comes around and my friend was in town and there is this sort of like, on the one hand, there's the expectation when you socialize, I guess. There's a certain expectation. And I know that a lot of us who have done this a lot in the past, um, don't always want to get into it. And so like, if you're doing something like, oh, I'm trying this new diet, even if people are not, we can feel judged a little bit. And then people probably have seen us like try and fail in the past. And so I feel like they're bringing those expectations. And I know that a lot of you like me, mostly just kind of want to avoid talking about it altogether, uh, which is, a bit of a problem sometimes because then we sort of feel this pressure to act normal and like order normal, you know, and that has probably more to do with our, or the version of ourselves that we believe we are, or that we think we are, or we need to present to others um, versus just being what you need to do, doing what you need to do, being who you need to be and fuck everybody else, right? But. Anyway, so we go to this restaurant and there is this sort of expectation of what you want, what you would like to do, but also like really not wanting to get into it. And then at the same time, we are fighting our own inner demons, our own cravings and things. And in a situation like that, it is very tricky. It is very tricky. And by tricky, I mean difficult to make the right decisions. It feels very difficult. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So, so we get to this place and my friend lived in Germany for years, so he is a big beer person. And so we get there, it's Saturday, it's a busy day. Uh, there's a wait list for the restaurant. And so in the mean, meantime, while we're t you know, waiting for a table, go to the bar and then everybody's ordering beer. And so that's the first moment where you're like, oh, I could do something different. I could go for like a low carb, drink and I was talking about it earlier in one of the other videos that it's not that I don't like um, certain drinks like I could have like a gin, a gin neat a neat gin so basically just straight up gin no ice no mixers like not a cocktail or anything like that's a drink that I have like some people like whiskey I really don't but like gin it's a I guess a clean drink in that way. I mean, it's still alcohol and stuff, but in terms of like carbs and stuff, much lower, but it's difficult. You feel that pressure and I don't know, beer is just so good. Uh, it is, it really is so good. And I don't drink a lot, um, but it was just, you know, especially like if you're at a nice place where they have really nice beer and stuff, like it's difficult to resist. So like that was the first thing and the problem is where we feel like, I don't know, the guilt comes in. Feeling like, I really shouldn't be doing this. I really shouldn't uh, be having this. And it just sort of makes you feel like, I don't know, like an addict or like an alcoholic that's breaking his vow. Um, and that certainly, I mean, that's always been like that in the past. And then when you get to those moments where you eventually break for whatever reason, it's like, oh, that's it. Everything is done. Everything, everything is undone. And we, you know, let's go back to our old ways and go crazy 
and you know, we'll let's go on a bender, and then we'll figure it out after the smoke settles. After no, what? After the, after the smoke clears or the dust settles? I'm mixing my. Um, and I'm trying to do it differently. So when we get to finally sit down, I thought, well, okay, what is a choice that I could make that perhaps is a little bit better? So like, okay, so this place that we went to, it's called Founding Farmers. And they have really good food. And so one of the things that I get there or that I have gotten a lot in the past is their chicken and waffles. Now, chicken and waffles are delicious, but chicken and waffles, as far as like a carb meal, are terrible. You know, it's breaded chicken, so it's fried chicken, uh, then the waffles, and then some sort of like, like a maple syrup or something like that. But it's like a lot of carbs everywhere and sugar, you know, carbs and sugar and everything. So uh, I thought about it. Let me do another set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. So I thought about that and then I thought, okay, I've had a beer. What could I do that is a little bit better? And so instead of going for the beer, you guys saw I got the steak and frites. So basically uh, steak and French fries. Now I could have also been like, no, let's replace the French fries with something else. But that I, I didn't, you know? And so those are the things that make me feel like, I still don't know. And I think that, you know, very long term, these things are okay. Like, it's not like I'm having beer and French fries every day, but having it every once in a while, you know, a couple times a month or something like that, is part of a balanced approach to life in that regard. The problem is that, you know, when you do that and then you basically keep it up for the next week or so, and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, so. I don't. But I said, and then, Okay, so I'm ordering that and I thought, okay, this will be protein mostly. And so like, I'm good with that. And then the guy, the waiter says, oh, you get another side. And then, you know, they have all sorts of sides. Some of them are, I mean, they're both really good. <laughs> they're all really good taste wise, but some of them are better for you than others nutrition wise. So I decided to go for the asparagus, which are a very good, very good choice. It's just grilled asparagus. So, uh, I felt like that was the compromise that I made, and I think like I think it's a good compromise. I, but I still felt bad about it. Like I still, you know. And at some point, we need to figure out um, how to gain more objectivity. Because I mean, of course, now it's been a couple of days, so those sort of emotions are out of the way, and I am processing this with a more clear head, and so it doesn't feel. But in the moment, it really felt bad. It felt like I was cheating, you know? It felt like I'm having a lot of the no-nos and I'm, and I'm not counting any of this. So I don't know all the macros. It's like everything goes out the window and in that moment, it feels like I'm, I'm cheating, like I'm undoing everything. Like, you know, at this point, like it just, you know, what's the point, right? And that's, again, part of the problem because that is going to happen at some point. And if getting to that, it, and I guess if we're building a house of cards in that way, and we get to that moment where we feel like we're tearing everything down, at least for me, that's always been my own doing. It's like, no, 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 no. We've just taken a step back. But to me, it feels like, well, no steps back can be taken. So we got to tear everything down and start again, which is ridiculous. So that was lunch. Let me do another set. Let me keep going. One, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, 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 seven, six, eight, six, nine, seventy. So it's still, you know, I felt a little bad about it, but again. I thought, 
Uh, it's okay. Then, I'm trying to remember if there's something else that I specifically wanted to mention about lunch. Uh, now, please don't be concerned. It's not like I didn't enjoy myself. I had a great time, obviously catching up with my friends, but it's, you know, it's like, you get these like flashes, right? Like you become aware, you know, throughout the day or throughout the meal, you get these little punctuations of uh, thoughts that are sort of like intruding, but it's not like I was there in misery, you know, feeling terrible about the meal that I was eating. I still liked it, you know, again, it's like small bits. It's overall a positive experience with these small things that are like making me feel like shit. And I'm sure that that will, 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 will work on that. We'll definitely work on that because there's no need for us to feel bad in that way. So anyway, then we get to dinner or, you know, like basically spend the rest of the afternoon, came, came here, get them all set up. We were talking. Uh, this is an old, old childhood friend. So went over to my parents because he wanted to say hello. And so then we were trying to figure out what to do for dinner. So let me do this. One, two, seven, eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighty. Oh, so we were deciding what to do for dinner. Didn't really want to go out, out or anything, but we felt lame not doing a little something. And so we decided that we'd go grab a beer somewhere nearby. And the place that we settled on, it's a place called Yard House, which is a place that has many locations around the country. And they're known for having a whole ton of beer. And like I mentioned, my friend is a big beer guy. So uh, we decided to go there. And again, as we're heading over, I'm thinking, you don't need to have another beer. You already had a beer today too. In fact, we don't need to go for another beer. And I was really thinking, I'm not gonna do it. And then I get there and he orders for first, and gets a beer and I'm like, oh, fuck it. I really want a beer. And so we get a beer. And basically at that point, like I was mentioning, and I think it's a video yesterday or the day before, at that point I was, I sort of went back into fuck it mode. Not, not a full, like, I, th I feel like I should make more distinctions between like fuck it and like screw it. And I don't know, maybe we need to come up with different nomenclature for this and come up with different words to know like the level of, like getting back from Texas last Sunday was full on fuck it mode. Like Mickey D's late at night. That's full on fuck it mode, soda and everything, right? Uh, this was maybe screw it mode, which is a little bit lower because, you know, I could have eaten so much more, but I didn't. I'll, you know, I, I got my beer and at that point, we're looking at the menu and again, this might feel a little repetitive if you watch one of the um, couple, last couple of videos, but basically, I used to go to Yard House, like not super frequently, but I used to go to Yard House with some frequency when I lived in Los Angeles because I lived near one of the locations in DTLA. And I used to get this pork burger that I really liked. And so, um, you know, after I've moved to Maryland or after I moved out of LA, at some point I visited the Yard House here in Maryland that it's also near my apartment. And they didn't have it anymore. And I was really bummed out because that was kind of like the, the thing that I would always get f as far as food from them. And uh, they didn't have it anymore. And then we go back and it's on the menu again. And I was like, oh my God. And so again, I'm already feeling like, oh, whatever. You know, I'm already having a beer. 
everyone is ordering their yum yums and I'm like, fuck it, I wanna have it. You know, I'm not gonna get all the extra stuff that I used to get and dessert and all that, of course. Like, I feel like that would be more of a fuck it mode, but this was just more like a slightly, you know, I'm going to have this and I'm not gonna worry about calories or macros or counting anything. I'm just like sort of enjoying myself. And that's what I did and it was delicious. And yes, again, there's a little bit of that mental friction because you do feel like, oh, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. What are you doing? And again, not like I was miserable the whole time because then at that point, if you're that miserable, we have, you know, and I have been, please don't, you know, get me wrong. I have been there, but if it's all misery, but you still can't get yourself away from that behavior, even though all it's bringing is misery, then we have a much bigger problem that is rooted in mental health. I have gone through that. I feel like I have worked enough to get out of that. But if you are there, where you have this very destructive behavior that, I, that you're doing destructively, and to a certain extent you realize that it's a destructive behavior, but you simply can't pull yourself away from that, then we have a bigger problem. And if you've never experienced that, then you really have no idea how destructive that is, and it would be difficult to advise someone who's going through that. But if you know exactly what I'm talking about, then you know, and you know, how painful it is. And I can tell you that, you know, there are, there, there is hope, you know, there are tools and things that we can do to improve mental health and to help deal with those situations. But this wasn't the case. This was mostly a, oh man, I really shouldn't be doing this, but I'm having a great time and it's okay. And then you're just, you know, keep going with your life. And every once in a while, there's like a little, you know, thing like, are you sure? Like tapping on the shoulder. Um, figuratively, not literally, of like, are you, yes, I'm sure, and I'm okay, you know, type of thing. I hope this is making sense to you guys. I, I really don't know, because, you know, this camera doesn't give me all the feedback in real time, so I want to make sure that um, if something that I say doesn't really make sense to you guys, please let me know in the comments, and, you know, I can try to make it a little bit clearer because sometimes these concepts sort of live in our heads and it's very difficult to um, explain because they're mostly feelings. There's nothing technical. It's all very subjective. And so, uh, you know, if you're having a conversation with someone, there's that immediate feedback of like, oh, they're totally not getting, getting this. But in this case, it's a little difficult. So you guys just let me know. Let me get another set because I... All right. <sighs> 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Almost done. I feel like these workouts are getting easier. The fact that I can talk to you guys and doing this, like the first few times I was sitting on the couch between sets because it was like, whew. but. Anyway, so that's what I ended up doing in terms of, of, uh, of Saturday. And then Sunday, again, it, it became, I don't, I don't want to say fuck it. It's not even maybe, maybe for Sunday it wasn't even screw it. It was more of a, I'm making a decision not to worry too much about uh, the specifics that I'm doing in terms of macros, and stuff. So I mostly just restricted my portions, I guess. And it wasn't terrible. So it was like you guys um, know. And if you don't know, you know, I'm sort of a time traveler because you guys are seeing this on a Monday, but it is the Monday uh, for me. It's the Monday after Easter Sunday, but for you guys, it'll be a week from today. So a bit of a time traveler, but um, yeah, I, you know, the first, I was going to some family functions, some family things, and it was, uh, the, you know, I had no control over the menu. I was a guest, both places. And so the first one was like a Caesar salad and lasagna. And so I try to eat more of the Caesar salad than the lasagna, you know, to try to limit the amount of lasagna. And then, you know, but again, I feel like the fuck it mode it's more like, and you know, we're gonna keep defining these things. We're gonna develop sort of like a, like a glossary of words 
developed sort of like a shorthand that we can all communicate a little bit better and understand each other. But I feel like that fuck it mode is like, I'm going to go out of my way to have things that I really, that not even I really, but like my cuckoo really wants to have that are really bad for you. Like I'm gonna have soda and I'm gonna go out of my way to buy candy and you know, stuff like that. But this was more of a, well, no, I'm not gonna restrict myself and not have any lasagna. I'll have it. I'll you know make sure that the portion is decent uh, and I'm gonna have a seltzer, you know? I'm not even gonna have like any of the sweet drinks that they have there, you know? So still, so I feel like there's some somewhat of a compromise and a good, that feels like a healthy approach or at least emotionally it felt like a healthy approach. And I guess we can't really forget that Aside from the physical aspect of doing something, um, you know, eating the perfect diet or whatever, or even a better diet or like excluding certain things, that's the technical. But the mental aspect and the emotional relationship that we have to food is one of the bigger issues at play, for example, for me in this, in this journey, in this health journey. So making those decisions felt healthy in my head. And again, I don't want anyone thinking like, are you saying the lasagna is healthy? It's like, that's not what I'm saying. And if you miss that point, don't, <laughs> you know, but making that decision in that moment. So yesterday with the food felt healthier than in the past. It felt like I was more in control and was okay with what was happening. So still not perfect work in progress. I feel like we could have done better, but again, it felt like it was better in, in emotional and psychological terms. And then we go to dinner and it was kind of like the same thing, you know? It was like a, a, you know, a bigger thing and there was more food and like looking at my plate because it was like barbecue again. And like I had both cornbread and a croissant and I didn't really need to have the croissant, but it was there and I wanted to have it. And it was one of those like moments also because it was Easter and you know, they, they, we had kids and stuff. There's, they put like little like, caramel, like uh, Cadbury eggs on the table. as like, like a mini pre-dessert dessert. And so I was like, fuck it. I want my egg because you know, and, and I had it. So these are the things that can be better and we're going to continue improving in the future. But it felt like, again, like a healthier approach. It wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to have everything that I want and you know, I'm going to like, my eyes are gonna be way bigger than my stomach and all of those things that feel like unhealthy um, actions and it feels like unhealthy behavior. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So um, this was just a, yes, I, I was partaking in you know, all of the festivities, but I, was, I try to be mindful in the things that I could control, which were portions, you know? And again, could have done a little bit better with the food, but again, it wasn't horrible. And then luckily for dessert, it was ice cream. And you guys know I don't eat ice cream because I don't like milky, creamy things. Uh, and so, yeah, that was that. That was it. Let me get the last set here and we'll keep going. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 100. All right, we are done. We are done with our workout. Good job, guys. Good job. We keep this going. So that was the weekend and that's sort of what happened. And again, we are having both a flexible, but at the same time, mindful approach to this that we're doing. So that was my experience. And I hope that it can bring some insight and be helpful to you guys. Um, but now it's Monday, we have a week. Over the weekend I got an email that my flight changed because the airport in Buenos Aires is having some work done or something when my original flight was supposed to land. So now I'm leaving like 36 hours after I was supposed to leave. Um, so uh, we are going to be traveling next Tuesday. So 
traveling on Tuesday, getting there Wednesday morning. So that means that we only have one week. And I do have some sort of, I guess, bad news. I still have a lot of food that I bought, the packaged stuff left that I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be taking because I'm not taking any luggage or anything. So, well, I mean, I'm taking like a personal item, but that's it. So there's no room to bring food. And that's a little sad. I really, really hate wasting food. Like, I really hate wasting in general. It just like, it really irks me, but food specifically is a bad one. So um, I might complain over the next week. Hope you don't find me too annoying, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to have as much as I can before I go. And yeah, it is what it is. All right, let's go make some food. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, well, um, let's have some lunch. And we are really gonna try to eat as much as we can of the food that we have left, because again, it's gonna be a shame to waste it. So uh, I have some of the last leftover uh, pork tenderloin and bacon that we cooked a couple weeks ago. And I have some of the um, Huel instant meal cups. And so I had three of the Korean barbecue left and one of the spicy gochujang. And so uh, I figured, since the spicy one is a little spicy for my taste these days, um, I um, decided to split it into three. So I'm using a third of that one and then just a full one of the Korean barbecue so that we have, you know, a substantial meal. Ooh, there's a ghost. Um, and then I don't know how much I have in terms of like bacon and pork, but I basically want to use all of it. So <clears throat> we're going to use all of it um, and see how much that is. So let me just get one of these guys and let's see what we got in terms of bacon. So how much bacon is there in here? Fair amount, probably. Oh, not that much, I guess. We got, uh, it's 55 grams of bacon. So that's good. 55 grams, we can input this into our numbers, bacon, we go to grams, and we do 55 grams, okay? And how much pork do we have? We zero this out and see how much it is. Again, probably not gonna be that much. Eighty-eight. Well, yeah, eighty-eight. Okay, eighty-eight grams of pork tenderloin. Now, let me add that into the numbers and see where we are with our macros and sort of like adjust from there. Okay, and the last few things that we're gonna add to round this out is 20 grams each of this sriracha mayo, uh, this oyster sauce, um, collagen peptides, and the MCT powder. So let's just do it, 20 grams each. Let's do, that's 12 of MCT powder. 17, 19, 20. Come on, there we go. And let me actually use the same scoop for the collagen. 20 grams of collagen. That's 10, 36, 38. 39 and 40, there we go. Move, there we go. So annoying. 
scale does not want to cooperate. Okay. And now we're gonna do, basically just for flavor, I'm gonna do 20 of this oyster sauce. Which is basically all carbs, but it does add a ton of flavor. Probably because it's mostly sugar. We didn't talk about this, but um, my lumen measurement this morning was good. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and so uh, it was a two, which means that again, you know, as I guess as bad as the weekend was, it wasn't terrible. My metabolism, it's still responding well. And so uh, today's supposed to be a low carb day and I'm trying to basically have most of my carbs for lunch now that we did a big workout um, and then try to have something milder in terms of carbs for dinner. Uh, we gotta do 20 grams of this sriracha mayo. Hello, there we go. 20, perfect. Ooh, that was close, okay. 20 grams, all right, so I'll go ahead and cook this and then we'll take a look at all the numbers in a minute. Okay, and here we go. We got our noodles, our Korean noodles. And let's take a look at the numbers for this, shall we? I'm gonna make sure that the camera's recording. It's been acting weird, like it shuts off at some point sometimes. Okay, so this meal is, um, you guys know what went in, you just watch that. And if you didn't, go back and watch it. Uh, we got 88 grams of carbs, 89 grams of protein, and 53 grams of fat for a grand total of 1,184 calories. And this is about a little over two thirds of my carbs for the day, a little over half of my protein, and a little under half for the fat. So we're gonna try to prioritize fat and protein for dinner in a few hours, and that should complete our um, meal for the day, our food, our nutrition, our calories, our macros. So I'm gonna eat this and um, that is it. Let's do a little taste test, shall we? Um, it should be delicious, delicious things went into it. And so, and we do have some experience with these instant cups from Huel. So let's see. Mm. Mm hmm. Very nice. It's a little rich, but mm, I guess better for it to be rich than completely tasteless. So very good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna eat this, get back to work, and I will see you in a few hours for dinner. Okay, well, it got late. It is 9 p.m., 9.07 to be exact. And it's a little too late to eat anything and I still don't feel hungry at all. Lunch was, you know, substantial and it was kind of late. By the time I was done, it was probably closer to five. So, you know, about the time when I should be done with my meals for the day, not just having the first one. So, again, this is tricky. And I was also working and, I don't know, kind of the day, uh, I was, was feeling pretty good energy-wise and mood-wise. And just my mood kind of took a turn down. Um... The last few hours and you know it's when all of those all that sort of self-doubt kicks in and thinking am i doing this right you know is this gonna work um and feeling like like this is a, a tricky one for me because i sort of set up some or and not even set up because that means that i'm doing it purposely but 
they get these ideas of what the process should look like, you know, and they're very arbitrary. And when it doesn't, I second guess myself and have all this self doubt about like, is this, am I doing it right? Is this going to work? And then I guess like that's the biggest fear of mine that, you know, I'll wake up one day and it's, you know, been, I don't know how long and well, I'll be, I realize like all the effort was for nothing, you know, because I messed up somehow. I don't know. So um, we're going to leave it like this for today, you know, with uh, the meals that we had. So uh, it ended up being low, low in calories. Um, but uh, let's see. It ended up being around uh, 1,200, 1,250, 1,250 calories. Um, yeah, not bad, I guess. It's a little low. It's a little low on calories, and I don't want to do that too often, but I guess, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, and I also, like, I <clears throat> went in a little, into a little bit of a rabbit hole on YouTube and I was watching other people's approaches to this, and you know, I may seem so confident about my ways when I'm making these videos for you guys, but I have my softer side too, and yeah, it gets to me sometimes feeling like usually, like when people have very like really strong opinions, and you know, I I tend to second guess myself quite a bit when that happens, and. You know, someone was saying, like, you need to eat seven meals a day. and um, Yeah, I mean, I know that's not going to be the case for me, but there's that moment when I, you know, I feel like, is that what I should be doing? Like, maybe what I'm doing is, you know, and of course today I only had one meal, so that is also making me feel like, like maybe that's the problem. You know, I don't know. And I don't even know what the problem is because... Technically, there is no problem. We're still doing it. It's just that, you know, doing it sometimes is more difficult than other times. And I'm probably just tired. <laughs> I'm probably just tired from working all day. And like, you know, we did a lot of stuff today. And so that is probably everything. But I'm trying to be mindful of the, when that happens. And learning to recognize when that sort of um, uh, moodiness comes from just being tired. Um, and that's probably what this is, but I figure I'd share it with you guys because it probably happens to you too. So we're going to leave it like this. I'm just going to go to bed. Tomorrow is another day. We have another busy day. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for hanging in there. I will see you tomorrow.